Hey, it's Jason, and if you notice behind me, I have all the Land Rovers lined up in my Land Rover collection. It's a beautiful day here in Maryland, and I wanted to pull them all out and take a few photos, but also I thought it would be a great opportunity to go ahead and walk you through all of them together. My Land Rover collection starts with a 1999 sorry 1991 Range Rover Classic and goes up to a 2016 Range Rover Sport so we're going to see from 91 to 2016 anywhere from a Classic to a Defender to a D1 to some L322s up to the Sport uh, if you want specifics on any one uh, specific Land Rover I usually have walkthrough videos of them just go to my YouTube channel um, main page and you can see all of them so let's go ahead and take a hop in the back and walk through each one okay let's start with the 1999 which is the oldest one I have the Land Rover Range Rover Classic I acquired this vehicle three and a half years ago it started its life on the west coast in California which has helped keep the rust and rot minimized and slowly over the years it made its way to the east coast it went from california lived in utah for a bit and then in the late 90s it went to north carolina and then it uh it came here to me in maryland this is a uh, vehicle that i've done a lot of work to anywhere from steering rod replacements control arms brake lines all the brakes all the way around idling issues uh, a ton of rust preventative maintenance intake system work upper intake manifold work quite a bit of work done to this i do not take this off road i do not drive it in the snow this is for my son and i we take it to different car shows and as he gets a little bit older we'll use that tent to camp on and then the camp at specific areas around maryland Right now, we just use that to kind of play on in the backyard and backyard camp. Um, admittedly, for those of you that are watching this video, you're probably saying, why do you have a high-low jack on the hood? Two reasons. One, the, hole, the, the holes were drilled in that hood already when I got it. There was a previously mounted one. So instead of filling the holes and painting it, I thought this added a cool look and feel. This vehicle doesn't go on the highways or off-road, and my son kind of likes the off-road-ish look. You can see more about this one as well as all of them today on YouTube. Some funky things we've done to it, like the interior roof lining with some matching pillows, just to kind of have a good time. Um, you know, everybody has their own preferences. I keep most of my vehicles like they came from the factory, but sometimes a few little things will be jazzed up. So let's move over to the 1993 Land Rover Defender. This is the 200 TDI imported from the UK two years ago. Story on this vehicle, uh, a gentleman in Florida imported six of them. The partner that he worked with backed out. He had six, uh, three, two 110s and three 90s, and he needed to get rid of them. So um, there's a car collector in my family um, that, that collects cars. So he agreed to buy all of them, him and, him and his son, and I was able to acquire one of them. They kept one or two of them, and then everything else was sold. Initially, this uh, Defender, um, admittedly I should say, this Defender needs a bit of work, right? I mean, it's an older vehicle. Uh, it needs to have some of the gauges fixed, the oil pressure wasn't reading. Uh, I need to go ahead and do some work with, I think, an exhaust leak, because you can smell it a little bit. But I am not going to mod this out to a $50,000, $70,000 Defender. I'm going to try to keep it very utilitarian. And this is a Defender that looks great 10, 10 feet back. The respray in the UK, you know, was done to make it look fancy for people in America to buy it. But this was a really affordable way for me to get a Defender. And it's a great, capable vehicle. And it will give me years and years and years of use. So I'm really excited about it. I really love it. Um, I drive this mainly to like cars and coffee and around my house. I don't, uh, I don't do long trips on it, but I do really love and appreciate the utilitarian aspect of the Defender. I like the roof rack is very basic and very utilitarian as well, which I appreciate. And um, it's a really cool Defender. 
all in all it had uh it was initially actually green which i wish it had a stayed green and then they resprayed it so uh cool car it's loud it's a diesel it's the 200 tdi it's tough uh i love it but if i had five six seven grand i could probably fix everything in one fell swoop i'm just slowly but surely doing things one other cool story on this range rover classic the gentleman that owned it i don't know if it's cool if it's depressing or if it's scary but the guy that he bought it from the guy that bought it initially was uh evidently having an affair with a cop's wife and then the cop came in the middle of the night and killed the husband that that bought this vehicle and i found all that out by doing some vin research and i think at that point is when it left california and it was probably sold by the estate and went to utah so kind of creepy some interesting history this i'm sure chaps in 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 the uk which is beating this thing up and having a great jolly time now it's over here on the other side of the pond in retirement but i'm having a great time with it with my son let's go over to this 1998 land rover discovery one a d1 i am the second owner of this of all the vehicles i take a lot of pride in, in this one and a lot of commitment i do for all of them but this one has a really nice story the gentleman that bought it lived uh, at the time was working in manhattan uh, he worked in finance and he had a cabin and he loved fly fishing uh, in maine so he bought this and it spent its time between his residence in georgia at the time and then he moved it full time to his cabin in maine and it stayed in the garage it didn't go in snow and that's evident because there's minimal rust at all um, the rust is just in areas where the paint got exposed and uh, he went fly fishing on the weekends it does have high mileage because when he was living in georgia he probably did a lot of driving and i have every service history receipt on this vehicle and it's in excess of twenty-five thousand dollars of maintenance when i got the vehicle we still had a ton of maintenance to do to it we had to replace uh do all the head gaskets on it and they were all just shot i've had to do brake work suspension work and a few other minor things i drive this vehicle the third week of every month i rotate it out as a daily drive with a third week of every month just to keep it cycling those two or more car show vehicles and just for fun on the weekend but this is the 1998 discovery one which i am the second owner and it is for a 23 year old vehicle i mean it's really in mint condition i definitely would watch the walk around of this vehicle on my main youtube page so we went from 91 to 93 to 98 getting closer to y2k but we're going to make a stop in 1999 what it's the same as that but that's the lsc this is the sd uh i got this vehicle don't tell anybody for 500 dollars. it needed some work but i got it for a great price it lived its life in maryland primarily in baltimore city uh it has 170,000 miles that one has 189,000 and the sd here i'm keeping it as factory as i can you can see it has some paint issues on the roof just some sun and whatnot uh, all of these vehicles i've showed so far are protected from the weather either in a garage carport or a car cover but the 99 probably has the most cosmetic damage i upgraded the tires i did brake work i did tie rods steering work rust preventative maintenance head gaskets have not been done a um, couple thousand bucks in this vehicle a couple thousand bucks in the other one not a whole lot in the defender yet and probably over four grand in the classic so far so this is the 1999 land rover discovery one that was a cicada if you're wondering we still have cicadas that went by so those are the 90s 91 93 98 99 range rover classic defender d1 lse d1 sd y2k baby let's go to 2003 2003 range rover l322 with the bmw v8 and oh boy we know what challenges that can have and i uh, i got this car from saving it from a donation or the junkyard it's a two owner vehicle i am the second owner it started its life also in california the couple that owned it moved to maryland 
when they moved to Maryland, they lived on the Eastern Shore and they had a kid and they had a lot of great memories in this Land Rover Range Rover L322 from 2003 with the BMW V8. And then one day they stopped driving it and the next thing you know, it had a bunch of issues. They took it to a shop and the shop basically said it has engine issues and you need to put a ton of money into it. And they were not happy. Um, they didn't want to put the money into it because admittedly, you know, you'll never get your money back out of this vehicle. I'll probably never get my investment back out of this vehicle, at least for the next 10 to 15 years. Who knows in 2030, 2040, what people are buying these for. But uh, it's my commitment to all of my cars in my collection. And this one, I had to go down to a awesome shop um, down in Richmond, Virginia, because they have a L322 that... It's probably the most modified L322 I've ever seen. And it was a lot of electrics work we had to do. Um, you know, transmission faults, gear shift selectors. It had an oil leak, leaking sills. And I put a, a fair amount of money admittedly into this. This is also a daily driver. I drive this the second week of every month, generally. Um, so that's the third week. This is the second week. That's usually the fourth week. And then we'll get to the next one, which I drive on longer trips. So this is the 2003 Land Rover Range Rover L322 in my Land Rover collection. I like the interior. It's kitted out with everything. You saw the brush guard. It has the roof rack. It has the side steps. It has a license plate. I mean the uh, light uh, protectors. And it has the little dog guard. In the uh, in the back, really really cool 2003 Land Rover Range Rover L322. But what is my daily driver for the most part? It is my 2007 Land Rover Range Rover L322 with the Jag V8, rock solid. I am, according to Carfax, the fourth owner. I bought this six years ago, I believe, uh, from the dealer. It had 80,000 miles when I bought it. It now has about 109,000. I forgot to mention this one has 220,000, I believe. Uh, the biggest issues on this are two. The steering column, the key won't turn. Watch my videos if you have that issue. I've had to do a ton of work to, uh, to, to resolve it and to keep it going. And then little funky electric issues. The, uh, you know, the tree for the blinker um, or for the wiper it won't do a single sweep. And I had a mouse get in here and chew some wires. But the engine, the transmission, rock solid. It doesn't leak oil. Of all of these so far, this is the only one that doesn't leak. That has a little bit of leakage. The D1s do. The Defender, of course, and the Range Rover Classic. Um, this one, I commute mainly when we go out to the beach, which is nearly every weekend in the summer. Um, and then, of course, when I take my son around town and, and whatnot. So I drive this one usually a week, a week, a week, a week, um, because they all have functioning heat, AC, and all the safety measures, airbags, and whatnot. So that's kind of my rotation of those uh, to keep them in. I love the uh, the simplicity. It doesn't have you know the steps. It doesn't have the grill guard or any of that. But I think it's incredibly elegant. Air suspension, uh, and it has just a lovely interior. Again, watch the full YouTube video on this. And it's important to note air suspension on the O3 as well. So I'm keeping all of these on air suspension. I don't believe in an L322 not on air suspension. I think you ruin it. I bet maybe in five to 10 years, one of these might be converted. But as long as I can keep them going, I will. The new baby in the family, we bought this brand new. Um, we had it moved down from Pennsylvania my wife bought this and uh, traded in an Audi Q5. This is a 2016 Land Rover Range Rover Sport. It's the uh, you know the the little supercharged um, V6. She loves it. I like it. Um, I don't particularly like all of the electronics. Sometimes I feel like I'm in a spaceship and I'm changing lanes and everything's going off. But you got to appreciate the elegance, the ride quality, the speed is amazing, and it's a very safe vehicle for her to commute to work in every day and for us to drive around with our son. Haven't done anything other than tinted the windows in this just to keep some of the sun out. Everything else is obviously completely stock. So that is the Land Rover collection I have. 
I had a really good question from somebody on my YouTube channel last week. They said, Jason, of all the Land Rovers you have, which one would you keep? And I thought hard about that. And I said, you know, the 2016 Range Rover Sport, um, you know, it's just, it's going to need a lot of continued maintenance because of all the electronics and they're easier to come by. So probably not the 2016. But we would keep that because that's my wife's. But if it was mine. The L322s, I absolutely love. And they're incredibly comfortable. And though at least the 08 or the 07 here is very reliable. The 07 to 09s have that jag. But they're finicky with the electrics. There's always some quirky electric issue I have to hook up my computer to and figure out what's going on. Granted, it's usually minor, but it can really ruin your day if you're going out to the beach 100 miles away and the light comes on. Is it minor or is it major? you got to find out. So I said, probably not the L322s. Then I talked about the Defender and the Range Rover Classic. And I said, you know why I love those vehicles? They're just not practical for daily driving for me with my son. So I would probably have to say if I could only keep one, as much as I love those, I don't think I could keep those. That leaves us the D1s. The D1, enough modern day luxuries and amenities to appreciate. Airbag safety features. It's incredibly capable off-road. It's incredibly beefy, durable, and while it has just enough electronics, it has enough basic things that you can keep it going. So the way I answered this question was the D1, and I specifically said the 1998 Discovery One, the 98 D1, the LSE, and I picked this one because it's in better shape. Um, I did the head gaskets on it. When I say I, a friend of mine up in York, Pennsylvania did it. So I picked the 98 D1, if I had to only select one, but I told him, I said, I hope I'm never in that position. I hope I never only have to pick one, because I, I, lo I love them all. And uh, as my son gets older, he's already showing a bit of interest in cars. I'm pretty sure he's going to appreciate them as well. And we're hoping one day to just have our own little car collection museum of sorts with all the automotive, automo uh, automotive stuff that we've collected and that we drive. But, as much as it's awesome having a big car collection, it's also relatively demanding and sometimes can be a pain in the butt. You know, driven daily, driven multiple times, pretty much weekly, 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 weekly. And the final two just don't get as much driving as they should. In fact, I keep an Excel spreadsheet to log when I drove them, how many miles I drove them to make sure I'm rotating them. Because in the winter, they, they sit. So pretty much from December to March, they sit. I don't take them out on the salty roads. I don't even take the D1s out in the winter. So those, you know, half, over half of the car collection, you know, four months out of the year, they're not driving. So those spreadsheets help me keep track of starting them and rotating them. Um, the O3 L322 is what I drive when it's really snowy. And in Maryland, they put so much salt on the road. As much as I hate knowing what it's doing to it, that's kind of my sacrificial, sacrificial car. Um, driving it in salty conditions i'm you know not driving this in salty conditions my wife she uh she commutes in that in the winter so it will be driven in snow but i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you can tell that um as i get these cars i'm not a 100 percent mechanic i depend on three primary shops to help me one in richmond virginia two in cockeysville maryland um i'll give a shout out to uh to each uh, Sarik Auto Works down in Richmond, Virginia. They do a great job on the L322 that I have. I'm probably going to send that Defender down to them in the winter as well for some work. And then um, I work with Justin over at Hunt uh, European Luxury Performance, ELP. Justin does a ton of work on the newer Land Rovers for me right there. And then um, Brennan over at uh, Hunt Valley um, Hunt Valley uh, Euro, he does just uh, a great job with my classic and, and those D1s. Um, I like to make sure that my local indie shops all have an opportunity for continued business and um, each of them have like a car that they really help me with. And then of course a friend of mine up in York PA chips in a ton to help me when I'm doing something and I want to do it on my own but I need help and then everything else I do myself. 
So thank you for watching my video. I know it's kind of lengthy, but hey, you know, it's like you just went to my own little backyard car show, and I really appreciate the comments, the subscriptions to my channel. If I get another vehicle, I'm going back. I'm looking at like a Series 3 or something a little bit older to add to the end. So 91... 93, 98, 99, 2003, 2007, 2016. This is my Land Rover collection. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.